Hey all, welcome back and this video I promise you is gonna be totally worth it because this is easily one of the best dishes that I've had and yes, we are making Haleem for this hashtag Pakistani cuisine collab with nine other YouTubers. I'm gonna link that all down below along with the recipe. It is a big one, it is a long one, but it's one of the best things that you can have let's start right now now once you've gathered everything together for this mega recipe then you want to start soaking some of your lentils and your rice so here i have chana dal some tur dal some white urad dal or mashki dal it's not the split one it's the whole one and then red split lentils i'm also going to add in regular old basmati rice and then put that all on a sieve and then rinse that up really well get rid of any mud dirt grit whatever you can and then add it back to that bowl then add in about three cups of water in there and then just set that aside for right now next we're going to take a look at the wheat now this here is cracked wheat or wheat that you usually use for porridge now this here is porridge or cracked wheat and it was honestly impossible for me to find whole grains of wheat um, in the area that I live and if you google replacements for wheat grain you may get cracked wheat perfect you can do that but anything else things like um, bulgur or buckwheat or um, even quinoa while they may be technically alternatives it's gonna have a crazy impact on the texture, the flavor, and honestly, if you can't find wheat wheat, then just omit it and make it without it. You'll be thankful. And we'll do the same thing with the cracked wheat as well. Put it on a sieve, rinse it well, put it back in the bowl, and because this is a much lesser amount to add up to the final ratio, we're gonna put lesser water, about a cup. So we want to let them soak overnight. Before that, let's add in some turmeric in there. It's going to absorb all that color, will add tons of flavor. Now, once it has soaked, transfer the wheat into its own pot and then transfer the rice and the lentils into its own pot. And then we're going to bring them both up to a simmer and you want to cook it for about an hour. Honestly, for me, it took about an hour and a half because I really was paranoid and wanted to make sure that the lentils were completely soft, that the wheat was completely broken down. And this is why the soaking process was really important. You really wanna make sure that you cook everything that we are simmering here to the point where you're able to easily mash it. And while the best way to do that is with a heavy duty wooden smasher, Again, another tool that was niche. I've never used it. And while I could go out and get it, I instead found alternatives so that everybody else who might not have this tool because they don't use it often can get the same result without going out of their way to get more stuff for their kitchen. And this step is very important to get that smooth texture because that's how you get that perfect finish with the meat and that smooth lentil wheat rice filled body basically of this dish. Now cooking both of these things with the lid on will really help you get that softness. Now once you get this ultra smooth texture, creaminess on both sides, mix the wheat along with all the water with the lentils and now we're gonna start mashing away now i first started with a regular um potato masher or just regular stainless steel masher but i wasn't getting the same results so then i went down to get my tamper and the tamper is the same thing that i got with my vitamix and again while it does have the right shape it's not that heavy so eventually just to get that result because it's very important I moved it to my Vitamix and then on super low speed one to two I got the result that I wanted and for now I'm gonna put this all back 
in that part while we now work on the lamp. Now we're gonna get this special halim masala together with some mace, clove, cinnamon, cumin seeds, green cardamom, and black cardamom. Some black peppercorns in there as well. To smash it all together using a modern pestle or a spice grinder and then add that to your lamb chops here. And toss that really well, rub it, coat it, and then we're gonna heat up our ghee into my karhai, my wok here. Now once that oil is nice and hot, go ahead and add in those pieces of meat that's rubbed with that beautiful spice. Now ideally you would do this step while the lentils and the wheat are simmering so you can save some time. And pay attention to that sizzle because that's really important to give your meat the color that we need to get that caramelization. You want to color each side and then as that's cooking add in your cumin seeds and your chili flakes in there let that get nice and roasted i'm gonna add in my ginger and garlic paste right in there and just start mixing it a little bit you can see that we're getting some nice color here and then just mix that all around let the rawness of the ginger and garlic paste get cooked out and then add in all the dried spices again mix it all together you want to make sure that your heat is not too hot because those spices could potentially burn because they are powdered and then you can mix in your yogurt with about a cup half a cup of water just kind of mix it well i could have mixed it a bit more but then once you've mixed it add it into the wok and then just cook it out until the oil starts to get released from the sides and that yogurt is gonna add so much flavor you're just not gonna believe it and when everything starts to look like this basically just lip smacking good transfer this to a pressure cooker i'm gonna use my instant pot and we're gonna cook it for 40 minutes i'm gonna add a cup of water more to help with the pressure cook and then i'm gonna cook this for about 40 minutes and let the pressure release by itself And once it's all done, this is what you're gonna see. And I was really tempted to get a roti bread and just dip in right now. Now there's some bones on these chops, so I'm gonna start breaking it up and then pulling those bones apart. And you can see how tender that meat is. And that's exactly what we want because we're gonna really break that down for the halim to really get those strands of that beautifully cooked meat. So transfer out your meat and then reserve and save all those juices for later. I saved my wok from earlier so go ahead and start smashing the meat. Really break it down, just turn it into pulled lamb because it's those strands, the ratios of the meat, of the lamb mm -hmm. that's really gonna add to the texture of the final dish. Now by the time I got to this stage my lentils had kind of cooled down hence the thick texture but not to worry we're gonna add all that awesome cooking liquid from earlier with tons of our spices and flavor and as you start heating it it's gonna thin right out and you can always adjust it to your preference with some more water and then make sure you taste it for seasoning because this is going to be incredible I simmer this on low to medium low for about 30 minutes more just to allow all the flavors to basically meld together and I was telling you how important that texture was for the lentils well this is why when I lift the spoon just look at all the strands of meat the ratio and that's what you need in a great halim look at all that now if you had a different cut of lamb, maybe like a bigger piece, then shredding it would result in bigger strands and bigger ratio. So you'll have a different experience. So I encourage you to try different cuts of bone in lamb. Now I got all these tips. Now I got all these tips from a friend's mom from Pakistan. So I don't think you're gonna take this lightly, but you do not eat Haleem with anything usually you're not gonna mix that with rice and even bread is a 
really major so-so kind of option. Halim is enjoyed with all these toppings, so fried onions or cilantro or green chilies, lime juice, julienne ginger matchsticks and you just have Halim on its own because it is a complete dish. And I was so happy that I got these candid tips. I was so happy that this toned out so well and this made quite a bit of food and we finished it in about a day and a half between two people. That was a lot of food and it was just that good. And I had tested it before this with another cut of meat and we finished that too. So just take my tip. This will be the best Halim recipe that you've ever had and I hope everything here has made your life easier to get the best Halim in your own kitchen. And there are also ways of making this with chicken. And if you want to see different cuts of meat and different styles of Halim, there's Hyderabadi Halim, there's Pakistani Halim, maybe there's others. I'll explore it, but let me know what you know and what you want to see next. And until then, check out all the other recipe collab people for the Pakistani cuisine collab and I'll see you on the next one.